Welcome to this series about caring for people with neuromuscular conditions. In the following videos, we're going to introduce you to the features and effects of these conditions, the issues and challenges that people with neuromuscular conditions face, and the solutions and strategies they typically use to live active, fulfilled lives. We hope that what you learn here will help you to be a great personal assistant, or PA, to someone with a neuromuscular condition. First, we're going to hear from Professor Ros Quinn-Liven, who is a consultant in neuromuscular diseases based at the National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery. There are many different types of neuromuscular conditions. So there are conditions that affect the nerves. There are conditions that affect the junction between the nerve and the muscles. There are conditions that affect the muscles. And there are also conditions that affect uh, the nerve in the spinal cord, which we call the anterior horn cell. So these are all very different conditions. There are more than 200 neuromuscular conditions in total and probably many, many more that we don't know about still. Uh, but uh, the one thing they have in common is that they cause weakness of muscles. Uh, and the weakness can affect either what we call the distal muscles, so the hands and the feet first, or they may affect the proximal muscles, the shoulders and the thighs, or they may affect um, the truncal muscles um, and or the face, facial muscles. So there's a very wide spectrum of, of disorder. Claire Perry is a student who has a neuromuscular condition affecting the anterior horn cells called spinal muscular atrophy. SMA is a genetic condition which affects the muscles and the nerves that link to the muscles. The wires that go to the muscles are essentially faulty, so not all the signal makes it through. This means that all the muscles in my body are weakened. They're still there, they're still doing their jobs, but in a smaller way. I have equipment that allows me to carry on doing the things that I need to do, but instead of my legs standing me up and moving, I have an electric wheelchair instead of my lung muscles pumping in and out all the time with no rest, I have a BiPAP. This equipment replaces the necessary functions. So the consequences of developing weakness as, uh, due to a neuromuscular condition um, is that it, it stops you being able to function, to do things that a lot of us take for granted. So for example, I might take it for granted that I can scratch my head when I want to, but if you have weakness affecting your shoulder muscles, you may not be able to actually lift your hand that high. Um, I think also if the leg muscles are involved, it will affect your ability to walk. So you may be able to walk, but with some difficulty, or you may not be able to walk and you may not be able to transfer yourself. Um, if you have a, a neuromuscular condition that starts in childhood, as those as that child grows, there'll be a the stronger muscles will pull against the weaker muscles. The tendons will get tight, and you may then get um, uh, deformities such as a curvature of the spine, a scoliosis, or uh, contractures of the joints. Obviously, when we talk about muscle weakness, you immediately think about limb muscles, which is what I've talked about, arms and legs and trunk muscles. But of course, um, we have smooth muscle that affects our bowel, for example. So if you have muscle weakness, that may affect how you can open your bowels because you can't push so hard against your, your diaphragm and your abdominal muscles, but also uh, the smooth muscle of the bowel itself might be involved. So, so people in neuromuscular conditions can have problems with their bowel, they can have problems with swallowing for the same issues. Um, the heart is also a muscle. So in some conditions, the heart is affected. Um, the breathing muscles may be affected. So when breathing muscles become weak, um, it may be perfectly easy for somebody to breathe during the daytime, but when they're lying flat, and they haven't got the help of gravity to, to push the diaphragm down, which is what we do when we breathe, uh, they may uh, struggle with breathing at nighttime, and that can manifest itself with a high carbon dioxide level, causing symptoms such as headaches and, and fatigue. Um, 
there are some neuromuscular conditions where the brain is also involved. Uh, and so there are people that, who may have um, some learning disability uh, associated with their muscle disorder. But I think it's also important to remember that people with muscle disorders uh, may also have incredibly high intelligence as well. And that can be um, sometimes masked or taken for granted if, for example, their speech is affected. So it's uh, if somebody has slurred speech um, or if they have weakness of the face muscles, so they don't uh, express them, you know, they don't have facial expressions, you can sometimes be misled into thinking they might have some learning disability when actually they may have an incredibly high IQ. It's also important to note that very few neuromuscular conditions cause loss of sensation, only loss of movement. Different neuromuscular conditions progress in different ways. Some neuromuscular conditions can be really very stable and not change much at all over time. Others uh, do progress and may progress quite rapidly. Um, there are also conditions that fluctuate. So, for example, uh, if you have a congenital myasthenia, a disorder of the neuromuscular junction, you may be better in the morning than you are in the evening because of fatigability. Uh, so conditions that are stable uh, are, 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 are easy to manage because things don't change. But if a condition is progressing, then the care needs of that person will change over time and their individual needs will change over time. And the uh, PA may need to be aware of that and adapt, be able to adapt to changes. Sam Waddington has Duchenne muscular dystrophy, which is a condition that can have rapid progression. You know, I've been aware for a while that, you know, needs are well increased. And fortunately for me, that's happened at a slower pace compared to others. And, and that means that um, there's more time to get used to, used to it. Um, but I think sometimes it is, I guess it is frustrating, you know, realising that there's less things you can do yourself. Many people with neuromuscular conditions employ PAs to support them in their day-to-day -day lives. This is a professional employer-employee relationship, which is unusual because of the very close working relationship that's formed. Well, the first thing I would say to, to somebody who wants to be a PA for a person with a neuromuscular disease is you can really change somebody's life. And I think, you know, you can unlock the door to freedom for a person with a neuromuscular condition. And for you, that will be an immensely pleasurable and rewarding job. Um, so uh, I would say if you're and if you want to be a PA, I think I would say get you, what you're going into is a relationship, a friendship, a rewarding symbiotic relationship that you're going to get great pleasure out of supporting someone. And the person you're supporting is going to be able to live their life to the full and participate to the to the maximum of their ability. So you're going to make a massive impact on their lives. Unlike in some other care settings, as a PA to someone with a neuromuscular condition, you'll be taking instruction and direction from that person. You will learn what to do and how to do it, but the decision making remains with that individual. You will be promoting their autonomy. What makes for a good PA with me is teamwork. So knowing the things that I need, knowing where things are, knowing how to listen when I'm explaining something new and being able to bounce off each other as well and give each other energy by creating a positive atmosphere. Kim Kemp has a form of muscular dystrophy and has experienced progression of her condition, which means that she now uses a wheelchair, although she didn't need one in the past. When I was younger, I did this. I played tennis, squash, you know, badminton. I loved all that. This is what I want to do. You know, I'm not going to go skydiving. I'm not going to go zipline. Well, I wouldn't mind. I may try a zipline, but there's certain things I want to do. As a PA for someone with a neuromuscular condition, your key role is to lend your physicality 
and your understanding of that person's vulnerabilities. With your help, that person can retain their independence and do all the things that they want to do. Ross Hovey works full time for a major high street bank and his PAs enable him to live what by anyone's standard is a very busy life. It's really important to take care as a PA with the person you're, you're doing and really think about whether it's putting on a coat, putting on some trousers, undressing somebody, moving their arms around out in busy spaces. You are not only a PA, at times you might need to be a bodyguard. SMA doesn't affect the things that I like to do, it only affects how I do them. SMA doesn't affect the choices that I make. It just means that I have to plan ahead in how I'm going to carry out those choices. SMA does not affect the brain in any meaningful way. Joe Kent is a professional who works with disabled teenagers and young adults as they gain independence. Enabling the person to make their own decisions alongside supporting them to stay as safe and healthy as possible is really important. In this module, we've introduced the different causes of neuromuscular conditions, how neuromuscular conditions affect many systems in the body, and what is rarely affected by neuromuscular conditions. We have met individuals living with a variety of these conditions. We've also talked about what people with neuromuscular conditions need, what you can expect from your role as a PA, and how best you can fulfil that role. So I think just understanding muscular dystrophy as much as you can, but also understanding me, because each of us is different. We're all very different. So understanding where I'm coming from, understanding where I've come from, understanding where I am just now, and understanding what I'm hoping for for the future and just to be adaptable as well and um, under, understanding too. So I think, you know, it's, it's such a responsible, important job and without them doing it so well, I don't function properly. I mean, we can all just function, but we can... We want to function really well and a good PA will do that for you.